Hi and welcome back to my channel. So I am going to attempt to film this video with my window open because it is such a gorgeous day out. Um, but there is quite a breeze coming in so if you hear any of that I apologize. Um, but it's August and it feels so good to just have a nice breezy day because um, I have a feeling we're probably going to get some more of those humid ones. So um, I have really found that I love doing tag videos. I think they're so much fun. Um, and I found another one that I'd like to do and I think it's cool because you get to know me as a reader um, and maybe find some things out that'll shock you. But this one is called the book snob tag. No, I don't consider myself a book snob, but I think I read enough books uh, that even when I ask for recommendations, they're like, we know you've already read that one. But I thought this would be fun either way. So I've got the questions here on my computer. Um, let's just go through them. So the first one is, uh, adaptation snob, do you always read the book before you see the movie? Now, this one is pretty ironic because I am actually going to see Where the Crawdads Sing tonight with some members of my book club, and I don't think there would be any way that I'd be seeing this movie without having read the book first. Um, so 99% of the time, I try to read the book before the movie comes out. Um, there are some movies out there that I haven't seen. Sorry, I just realized we're a little bit crooked. Um, there are movies that I haven't seen because I haven't read the book. Like, I have never seen the Hunger Games movies <laughs> because I have never read the Hunger Games books, which is probably shameful, especially as a middle school educator, but I just haven't. So, yes, read the book before you see the movie. Number two, format snob. You can only choose one format in which to read books for the rest of your life. Which one do you choose? Physical books, ebooks, or audiobooks? Oh, this is so unfair. Um, I'm gonna have to say physical books because I love physical books. I love a good audiobook and I think they're so atmospheric and they truly do help me read a lot more. Um, but I love owning a book, so physical books. Um, let's see. Number three, ship snob. Would you date or marry a non-reader? Um, I am not married, but I have dated many a non-reader. Um, I don't expect someone to be a reader to date them, uh, because I read a lot. Um, it's cool if they accept it. I definitely have dated my fair share of people that thought it was weird that I read so much, because why would I read outside of finishing school, but I, yeah, I have no problem doing that because I think that's fairly common. Let's see. Number four, genre snob. You have to ditch one genre never to be read again for the rest of your life. Which one do you ditch? Like, well, can't say fantasy because then I could never read Harry Potter again and I would probably ball my eyes out if I couldn't do that. Um, although I don't read much fantasy outside of that. But science fiction and I feel like that's cheating because I don't really read a lot of science fiction um like I've never read The Martian and I know a lot of people love Andy Weir's books but I if I never had to read another science fiction book I'd probably be okay with it so science fiction um do not make me get rid of my thrillers which is hilarious because that would have never been a topic I thought I would have ever had but um, let's see, uber genre snob, you can only choose to read from one genre for the rest of your life, which genre do you choose? Okay, it's really ironic that I just made that comment about thrillers. <sighs> I guess at this point in my life, and considering this is when I'm answering this question, I think I'd have to choose thrillers. I love them. I love kind of the twists and the turns and the things that I'm not expecting. And even though I've read a lot of thrillers, I start to think like, oh, I totally know what this one's going to be. And it'll be like, nope, I had no idea. So I think if I had to pick one genre for the rest of my life, I would say thrillers, but I would definitely miss some of that like contemporary romance and historical fiction for sure. <clears throat> Number six, community snob. Which genre do you think receives the most snobbery from the bookish community? 
Oh. Probably people that read classics. I am not a big classics reader. I had enough of reading the classics in college with being um, an English language arts minor and I ended up taking enough credits between my two universities to basically have a major. I'm done reading Shakespeare. I'm done reading all of like the classic books that everyone should read in their lifetime. Even in high school, you're reading like Great Expectations. But I think people that read a lot of classics think that they are ugh, like above everyone else because they're reading all of these fancy classic books. Uh, <laughs> which if you read classics, that is totally fine. But I had to pick which one I thought was the most snobby and I would definitely say those are probably the most snobby readers. And number seven, snobbery recipient. Have you ever been snubbed for something that you have been reading or for reading in general? Oh, for sure. Uh, I read a lot. Um, I'm at like 75 books for the year so far um, and it's only August. Um, and so people are like, don't you do anything else with your life or why are you reading so much or put down your book? <laughs> that may have been a statement when I was on vacation with my family, but I really enjoyed my hammock and my candle. So no, I don't want to put down my book. <laughs> um, but I don't think I've ever been snubbed for something that I am reading. Even when I read like Twilight or I read the Fifty Shades of Grey, like I don't remember anybody saying like, oh, I can't believe you're reading that. And maybe it's because they were so popular at that point that nobody gave me the grief on that. But yeah, I... People give me grief for the amount of reading I do, but other than that, not for anything that I've read in specifics. So this was a fun one, quick seven questions that are out there. I'll put the questions in the um, description below. Um, do you consider yourself a book snob? How would you answer some of these questions? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, as always, like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.